Blanca from JovancaCRS.com and today I have a very special friend and guest. This is Vince Leah. Vince, what's your YouTube channel's name? Uh, it's under Vince Leah. So there you, you can go. Find it below. I'm gonna put a link on somewhere <laughs> here so that you can check out his channel. He is a fellow uh, vegan and wellness seeker <laughs> and um, he's also a, a dear friend and we've been talking for the last few days because Vince suffers from colitis which is an inflammation in the bowel especially the last half of the large intestine that causes a lot of symptoms and a lot of issues and I'm gonna let Vince tell us his story in a few minutes but we created a, I, I sat with him and I did a full nutrition and herbalism protocol and I wanted to share it with you because I think a lot of you out there can benefit from his experience. So first and foremost, thank you for being here, Vince. Thanks for having me, Javanka. I'm excited to, to talk to you again and to share uh, my story with everyone. Absolutely. So Vince, tell us a little bit about your story. What happened? How did you get diagnosed with this condition and how have you been struggling? Well, it's interesting because the diagnosis didn't come till much later because doctors <laughs> didn't know what the hell was wrong with <laughs> no. me. Uh, I mean, I grew up in an Italian family, mm -hmm. so cheese, meat, pasta, it's like multiple times a week. You're right. So I was, uh, I, was, I was working, I graduated college and I noticed I was getting like just a lot of stomach pain mm -hmm. and to the point where like pain would just ramp up the point where I wanted to kill just kill over and then it would go back down and I noticed these ramping ups with pain started increasing in frequency or it would be like say one an hour yeah. then it would be two an hour oh yeah three an hour and finally I'm like something's That's wrong because yeah. first I thought oh it's just it's glass it's acid or um, it's gas it's acid reflux right. or something like that right. um then I, knew, I felt like it was something more serious so mm -hmm. I went to my doctor and he recommended a GI doctor so I went and talked to him and it was like, okay, try this, and then try this, and then try that. And I'd get like minor relief, but yeah. I was still having a lot of the symptoms. Right. And a lot of the symptoms that, I mean, everybody's a little different right. with what you experience. Yeah. For me personally, and I'll get, I'll get pretty deep with these, <laughs> these symptoms, because they're, you know, you hey, probably you know, heard we're here, right? Yeah, we might as well. Um, so a lot of times I was getting, obviously, se severe abdominal pain. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of diarrhea. Yeah. So I really wasn't having any formed stools. Right. And um, I'd have blood in the stool. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, this isn't it's normal. Scary, this right? isn't like You're right. Like, mm -mm. And so they would give me different. My first doctor would just give me different things, and I was like, well, why don't you give me a colonoscopy? Right. And I was, see, I was like under. I wasn't even thirty at the time. Right. And he goes, why? Why do you want a colonoscopy? You're not even thirty <laughs> yet. And I was like. Because I don't think you're going to know what's wrong with me unless you look inside that area. Right. We did an endoscopy. Nothing was wrong in the esophagus or the stomach. But I was like, there's obviously something wrong somewhere right. and I want to find out. And so we, we did the colonoscopy. He did a biopsy and come to find out it came back with colitis. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, have, would you have been able to diagnose colitis without a colonoscopy? And he goes, no. And I go, it's time to find a new doctor. <laughs> yes. So I love uh. the fact that you are taking control over <laughs> and, and being responsible with your own health and longevity because a lot of us tend to put our trust in doctors and mm -hmm. sometimes rightly so, but the truth of the matter is that these are also human, they're imperfect. And this guy probably thought you're too young to suffer from any of these conditions. I'm not going to even uh, go there. But the truth of the matter is that colitis, uh, people with colitis have a higher um, chance of getting things like colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. So you need to be aware. And it, I'm talking about colitis here, but this applies to almost everything that might be happening with you. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's hard for doctors to, to treat this in a right. way because there's a small group of medication right. and some may work for some some may not work for the others and they can't they're not really trained too much on diet right my, my current doctor is but the first two i went to didn't really they understand that don't know yeah and so i started looking into like okay it's going into my gut there's something with food right so let's start looking at food yeah and see and i tried i tried some really <laughs> weird stuff for a few years we all have <laughs> So then I was at an event where I was talking to somebody and he goes, hey, why don't you start having a green juice? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what about the fiber? Like, I was told by my doctor I shouldn't have any fruits, any vegetables, anything like that. So I was eating basically meat, 
rice, potatoes. Oh. Like, meat, rice, potatoes. And mm, 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 mm. so I was like, you know what? I've tried some weird stuff. Green juice isn't as weird as some of the other but things I've tried. Give it a go. So I had a green juice and I felt okay. Like it didn't mm -hmm. bother me because I was expecting um, some of the symptoms to really start ramping right. up after I was having this. So I literally started having a green juice every morning. There was a shop by my house before I left to work. I'd swing in, grab a juice, and I was like, okay. And then some of the symptoms I noticed started going away. Okay. Along with the green juice, I was also getting rid of all dairy. Because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd gotten rid of, um, I'd removed most dairy by then, but right. not all of it. Right. So I got rid of the dairy, and I got rid of the red meat, and then the chicken. Right. And then I was still having fish at the time, right. you know. I thought I needed it for protein. <laughs> right. You know. We're supposed to do it at some point or another. Yeah, you know. So then I started slowly making the transition, and then I was like, okay, well maybe I could have a salad. And I remember like, I was like, if I'm having a salad, I have to be at home because it's gonna react. It's way too much fiber. It's not gonna work. And then I had a salad, and I felt okay. And then it just the the gradual transition of like symptoms going down, mm -hmm. and the variety of foods that I was eating, yeah. even on at that time, a more plant-based diet, I was I was feeling a lot better. Awesome. So I was like, okay, there's something to this. Yeah. So then I started doing research and realized, okay, I didn't need the fish. You, yeah. I could do it without the fish. Right. So I got rid of fish, so I went strictly vegan, plant-based. Um, and I was fine for a while, and every now and then, I'll get a flare. Right. When And I think one of the flare, the first flare I went, I went through, I was actually uh, in Mexico. Oh. And I got a ton of mosquito bites. Oh, and it was wow. after the mosquito bites, I started getting like those symptoms that I hadn't experienced in years. Okay. So then I started re researching like, okay, like I couldn't figure out why. Right, I was right, like, right. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm eating still relatively organic, healthy, even right. though I'm, I'm in Mexico. And I was just like, what's going on? So I'm like, is it environmental? It could be. It could have been the mosquitoes, because mm -hmm. mosquitoes make your body release uh, histamine, right. which could attack some of the intestines. Okay. So I was just like, okay. So I, I got through that one, and then recently, then I was okay for a while, and then I had like a lot of stress in my yeah. life, and I couldn't figure out like why am I experiencing some of these symptoms mm -hmm. again? And then I was able to make the connection between the stress going on and then the symptoms. Right. So then it's like, okay, I need to start meditating more. Right. I need to start going for a walk. Find a way to manage stress. Yeah, and just start, you know, um, reshuffling things in your life to make sure you're surrounding yourself yeah. with things that are positive and things that aren't going to induce that stress. Correct. And so I've been doing a lot of that. And then that's yeah. when we started talking yeah. about some of these things. And I was like, okay, there's more. There's more to do. So I love this story because it actually shows how the process of healing is a journey, right? And the end of that journey is the day that you die. <laughs> you will continue to be curious about how to make your yourself, your body, and your life better. I also love the holistic approach that Vince is taking. Right, so he started changing his diet and then eventually he started recognizing that stress was a big issue when it comes to anything that has to do with inflammation in the body, but especially colitis and inflammatory bowel diseases. And he's now taking steps to manage that in order to, ho to hopefully reduce the amount of flares that he gets in the future. And then when we started talking, uh, I said, let's let's talk herbs, right? Let's just so when I do these kinds of, of assessments with clients, I do kind of like he already did have the work for me because he's already <laughs> halfway there. He's doing the holistic stuff. He's taking care of his mental home. He's taking care of his physical home. I'm just coming here to help, kind of like push and nudge a little bit in hopes that this is kind of like the last nail in the coffin <laughs> of this colitis situation. So one of the things that I recommended to uh, Vince is things that he's already doing, like omega-3s. Mm -hmm. We're both vegan, so the brands that we recommend are vegan, mm -hmm. which it's totally just as effective, and there there's a handful of them. There's dozens of them, in fact, out there. And, um, uh, and then also a, a bunch of the things that you're doing with the diet. So tell me a little bit about, before the assessment, before the herbs that yeah. I'm gonna mention, 
What supplements have you been taking? Um, obviously turmeric, but making yeah. sure it's high in curcumin with black pepper. Correct. Because that's really the compound and the component that you need right. in the turmeric. Right. Uh, ginger. Yes. Um, Great anti-inflammatory. Uh, I was actually taking a bromelain supplement, mm -hmm. um, but I also eat pineapple. Yeah. So we have to get it from the core of the pineapple. Not yeah, the juicy. Floor. The juicy is not. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? The core of the pineapple is not that much fun. Uh, bromelain, for those of you who don't know, is an enzyme that lives in. I mean, it lives in other fruit, but it's really highly concentrated in pineapple and fruit that are in the pineapple family. Yeah. So what I, you know, what I actually do is I buy a pineapple, <laughs> and then I obviously I want the, the, the good, the juicy fruit. But then I take the core and I cut it uh -huh. and I freeze it. Yeah, and then I, mean, I toss it in a smoothie, and then you can't really like the core, like because it's kind of like because you're just right. gnawing on it, but it blends in a blender, yeah. and it tastes really good. You don't even notice it, you know, yeah, but you're just getting like this this powerful boost of romaine right. in your smoothie. Yeah, it's so awesome. I love doing that. Um, and then the omega threes you use. The omega threes I'm mm -hmm. I'm using. Magnesium maybe. I do magnesium. I started doing that. You know, and then a lot of the vitamins, obviously, like vitamin C, vitamin right. B, B twelve. And certainly, uh, watching what you eat, obviously. Um, yes. And then in I come with my idea of using some herbs. And so I'm gonna mention here two that I'm recommending to Vince because I know his story and his history, and I can actually make a clear you know recommendation and then there's another one that is just four little herbs and spices that you find in everybody's kitchen that you can use just for most people that are suffering from colitis or, or any other kind of uh, internal kind of bowel concerns but the the two main herbs that I wanted Vince to try the first one is ginkgo biloba Ginkgo biloba is a plant that's been used in Chinese medicine for I don't know how many hundreds of years and it's great at calming the stress response in the body so it affects your central nervous system, it calms you down and it helps you focus and concentrate so that when there's so other kinds of stressors in your life you your body can adapt and and function and, and, and deal with those stressors in a more balanced way so that your your body doesn't have a physical reaction to the stress so that'd be good especially when I'm in a state or an environment where the stress goes up right that'll help calm the nervous system down right. reduce the anxiety that right. the stress causes okay. it also helps you not get there right so yeah. if you're taking it and you're perfectly calm but you happen to go and visit you know your grandmother who might be a pain in the neck <laughs> You just go there and you know you're going to be stressed out. That will actually prevent you from getting out of control stressed out. It allows your body to better manage the stress response, you know, and the production of uh, hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, which are going to cause and wreak havoc in your body. And then the second one is one called Boswellia. And Boswellia is another plant. I love combining the two. Herbs tend to work better when you combine them and uh, Boswellia has been studied and shown to help reduce inflammation in the bowel. So it is recommended for people with colitis specifically. So it's really, really an awesome um, herb. You have to take it, you can take it in pills, you can take it in teas, you can take it in tincture forms. I'm recommending Vince to take it in capsules and try it for four to six weeks and see how it goes. And now, then, yes, go ahead. Now, if I do four to six weeks and I notice improvement, do I keep taking these or are these things that I take as needed? I think those are the ones that you take as needed. So okay. you try a treatment, I mean, just like with everything that has to do with helping your body restore balance. And it works with medicine just as much as it works with yeah. plant medicine. Once you are in that state of balance and your body does what it does best, with it, which is heal, heal itself, then you technically don't need it. It's like asking you to take antibiotics when you don't have a, a virus, right? You, but now you know, ideally you want to uh, monitor that by writing in a journal, mm -hmm. understanding the, the reaction that your body is having. And once you know, now you know that next time you start feeling a flare come up, you immediately incorporate these herbs and the flare should be a lot shorter. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. And then, yay! And then we have another blend that we're going to show you in a few minutes. 
Okay, back in the kitchen, and this is the awesome remedy for colitis. This uses just four herbs, the kind of stuff that you probably have in your kitchen, and if you don't, maybe your mom or your grandmother will have them in the kitchen. Chances are you've heard of some of them, and at least one of them you've probably never heard of before. The first one is cardamom, which, and you'll see it here, it's really aromatic, you can feel, you can see it in a lot of desserts, and it's really great at reducing gas, bloating, indigestion, and some of the symptoms of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. Same thing with asafoetida, which I'm gonna leave for the very end because you've probably never heard of. Then we have cinnamon. Uh, duh, who has not heard of cinnamon, right? Like really great at reducing and calming blood sugar levels. And uh, of course, it's really tasty and yummy. And finally, cloves. Cloves are also used in a lot of desserts and it's really great for pain, especially pain in the mouth. So if you have an issue with an abscess or any kind of problems in the mouth, this will help. It's really amazing. And of course, all of them are digestive herbs and they're also culinary herbs. Everybody uses them for food. And then finally, I have asafoetida. Yes, that's a word, asafoetida. It's an Ayurvedic herb, it's a plant from India and people have been using them, this one for many years to treat IBS, treat excessive gas, bloating, indigestion, irritable colon. So in combination, the four of them are a great remedy for colitis. All you have to do is equal parts of each of these herbs. So I just have them here already taken out in equal parts and I'm gonna put them all into a jar, a mason jar, so that I can save these. And then I'm just gonna mix this up. You know, I kinda like to blend them together so they're nice and together. And that's it. And so now I have my little blend every morning. All I And you could actually close this tightly and just give it a really nice vigorous shake. And every morning, I'm just gonna take about, uh, I'd say about a quarter teaspoon, just like this, maybe a little bit more than a quarter teaspoon, and put it in about four ounces of water. That's it. Shake this up and drink up. You can do this twice a day if you have a really bad colitis flare-up or if you're suffering from IBS with a little bit of diarrhea, this will actually be really helpful. Try it for a few days, let me know how, how it works for you. If you've tried it before, please let me know by leaving a comment below. I wanna hear from you, I wanna know if this is helping you out. Make sure that you share this video with all of your friends all over the internet, and that you subscribe for more tips and a jolt of motivation for your healthy, sexy, and beautiful life. See you soon.